Nowhere Else to Go, Chapter 11, A Miraculous Ladybug Fanfiction. If you're new to this story or missed any of the previous chapters, check the description box for links or click on the card in the upper right corner for the playlist. As always, enjoy the chapter! Please, can you just wait until tomorrow? I want to talk to him first. The police chief's stony expression didn't change. You'll have to talk tonight, then. Adrian's face darkened. I don't think I'm ready for that yet. He's a dangerous criminal. Who knows what he could do in 12 hours? He's my father. The man who dropped you off a building? With all due respect, Adrian. Chief, please. Look, can I just use your phone? Adrian cut in, making no effort to hide his irritation. I'll call him. I'll make sure he'll wait for me. The police chief grunted disapprovingly, but he lifted the receiver and handed it to Adrian. The dial pad was near him, so he punched in the numbers while Adrian dictated them. The air was tense as Adrian waited for a response. The squeaking of a chair in the silence made Ladybug realize she was jiggling her leg in anticipation. She stopped. Father. A chill crept through Ladybug's body at Adrian's greeting, and she strained to make out what Gabriel was saying, but all she could hear was the low, muffled tones of a human voice on the other end. I need to talk to you. Please. Tomorrow. Will you wait? In the pause that followed, some of the anguish of Adrian's expression seemed to dissipate, enough to clue Ladybug in that Gabriel was willing to cooperate. 10 a.m. Please don't, Father. You'd better not try anything. You don't have any right to- Never mind. We'll talk tomorrow. Bye. All eyes were on Adrian. Judging by the way he'd raised his voice, the embers were still smoldering. Adrian was right. He needed time, even a few meager hours, to step back and cool his head. Ladybug resisted the urge to touch his arm in comfort. He's going to wait, he reported. We're going to have to put the mansion under surveillance overnight, in case he attempts an escape. Do what you need to, Ladybug said calmly. I can keep watch too. You must be tired after today's events, Ladybug, the police chief said. Go home and rest. It would be wise for you to escort Adrian tomorrow when he goes to visit his father with your strength fully recovered. Tired was an understatement. Ladybug nodded, relieved both to be let off the hook, and also that the suggestion to accompany Adrian had come from the police chief and not from herself. She preferred it that way, just her and Adrian confronting Gabriel Agrest, no officers in the room, so he'd be able to transform if needed. The chief had saved her the trouble of arranging that without being able to fully explain. Thank you. I will, Ladybug said. If you'll keep the gate open for us, I'll have the police force infiltrate the grounds while you're speaking with Mr. Agrest, and spring the arrest once you're finished. Yes, we can do that, Adrian confirmed. The three of them took a few more minutes to iron out the details of the plan. Adrian's familiarity with the house and Gabriel's character were to their advantage. With the Agrest mansion built like a fortress, an attempted arrest otherwise may have turned into all-out war. Finally, Ladybug and Adrian exchanged glances and stood up, ready to leave. They were finished here. Just a moment, Adrian, the police chief called out. He gestured for Adrian to sit back down and nodded at Ladybug, indicating she was free to go. Feeling uneasy, Ladybug met Adrian's eyes, communicating to him silently that she'd wait for him outside. Adrian gave her an almost imperceptible nod before resuming his seat. Marinette placed her to-go cup of lavender tea down with a tap and slid into a seat, whipping out her phone to text Adrian. I'm at a cafe across the street. She stared at her phone, trying to get her bearings. The warm, clattering hum of the cafe's activity sounded muted in her ears. Everything felt surreal. Had they really caught Hawkmoth? Was Adrian, Cat Noir, really at the police station? Was it really all over? She had the eerie feeling of being stuck in a dream that she expected to end at any moment, but it just kept dragging out. 
Marinette extracted a stylus from her bag to do some rough sketching on her phone, hoping a familiar activity would help ground her. Realistically, even if the investigation fell through and Mr. Agrest escaped the clutches of the law, the danger was gone for now. He didn't have his miraculous anymore. Hawkmoth's reign of terror was over. But what if he tried to use the peacock miraculous? According to Nuru, it was in the mansion and Natalie had used it before. Maybe the fact that it was damaged would be enough to forestall him. Ladybug and Adrian were supposed to speak with Gabriel alone the next day. He wasn't supposed to know that the police were coming. She'd have to be on her toes in case of any surprises, and Adrian could transform if needed. Marinette felt wary. They'd had limited experience with the Peacock Miraculous and she had no idea what to expect. She outlined a dress and a pair of heels with a peacock feather design. They'd get through it somehow, as they always did. Yet another thought plagued her. What was going to happen to Adrian when his father went to jail? Where would he go? Did he have any other family? A heavy feeling settled in Marinette's chest as she sketched a matching peacock motif men's suit, giving the faceless model's hair a sweep like Adrian's. What if he had to leave? Her eyes blurred and tears dropped onto the phone screen. She wiped them away, but they left behind salty streaks. This was a mess. She was feeling terrible about the whole situation, and she imagined it must be a hundred times worse for Adrian. She tried to continue sketching, but ended up just staring at her phone until the screen went black, tears pouring down her cheeks. She didn't even hear the door open, just heard the voice behind her. A gentle, hey. Adrian was behind her, one hand resting on the back of her chair and a faint smile on his face. What was that about? She breathed, swiveling around, wiping furiously at her cheeks to remove the traces of tears. Ah, uh, he just wanted to talk about some logistics. Adrian gave her a twisted smile and came around to sit across the table. He rested his forearms on the table and looked at his hands, fiddling with the miraculous ring. Everything's all settled now. Can we really trust your father not to do anything tomorrow? Adrian looked deeply troubled. I understand why you don't trust him, he said in a pained voice. And I don't either, to be honest. But I don't think he really wanted to hurt me. He hesitated before speaking the next words in a shaky whisper. I think he loves me. The words hung in the air as if Adrian wanted to take them back, but stubbornly refused to. So, one last night at my place? Yeah. Marinette's mouth felt dry as she asked the question she didn't want to ask. And after that? Adrian tried to smile, but the corners of his mouth wilted. He jabbed Marinette's paper cup half-heartedly with his index finger. Coffee or tea? Tea. Adrian! Marinette's heart was heavy, watching Adrian's reaction to her question. What's going to happen to you? May I... Adrian's voice shook and he swallowed. May I have some? Marinette didn't answer. She stared at him, open-mouthed. He was desperately ignoring the question. The answer couldn't be good. She felt like icy fingers had gripped her heart. She got up, came around the table and wrapped her arms around Adrian, pushing his hip over with hers so she could perch on the edge of his chair and hug him with all her strength. Don't leave she said, burying her face in his shoulder. She felt his fingers close around her arm, and they stayed like that for several long minutes. She heard him sniff and his fingers left her arm, presumably wiping tears, before returning to their place, slightly damp. She gripped him tighter. As if the physical contact had given him strength, Adrian finally answered, My mom's cousin's family lives in Guadeloupe, in the Caribbean. I've never met them. Maybe they'll be nice, like my mom. At least they speak French there. His attempt to be positive was utterly defeated by the despondent tone of his voice. You don't have anyone closer? She felt him shake his head and pulled away to look up at him. It was like the light had gone out from his eyes, sad and resigned. Yet there was tenderness in his expression that she had rarely seen in Adrian, 
but had become so familiar in Cat Noir, reserved for his partner. When do you have to leave? They're contacting my family and making arrangements. They said they're trying to book a flight for tomorrow. Tomorrow? Marinette was astonished. She felt empty inside. It wasn't fair. That soon? What about school? What about- I know. I wish I could just stay with you forever. Adrian moaned. Can't your parents adopt me? I wish. But then he'd be her brother. That would be weird. Adrian stood up, tugging Marinette along with him. Come on, let's go home. Don't forget your drink. The tea was already lukewarm to the touch when she picked up the cup. She offered it to him to take a sip as they walked out into the mild evening. 8.14 p.m. It felt later than it was. The police station had already called Marinette's parents to inform them that Adrian needed to stay with them for the night. The streets were hushed. A few people strolling, some merry chatter as they passed to restaurants' outdoor seating. The rest of Paris was still oblivious to the fact that today marked the change of an era. This could be their last night together. Marinette considered asking Adrian if he wanted to transform and scale the Eiffel Tower just so they could look at the city together. The city that wouldn't be the same anymore without Adrian in it. Without Cat Noir. A part of her wanted to do it. Like a final goodbye to Ladybug and Cat Noir. But the suits seemed overworn, bitter. The miraculous felt heavy. Avengers Marathon? Marinette suggested instead, her shoulder brushing Adrian's. Exhaustion started to hit her, hard. It felt like days had passed since she'd brought Cat Noir soup the previous night. Was that really just last night? How about Yakitate Japan? I feel like something fluffy and cheerful, and it's full of puns. Yaki what? It's an anime about a baker kid who wants to make the signature bread of Japan. Japan. Bread. Get it? Marinette cracked a real smile for the first time in hours. You would like that. It's a cute series. Yeah, he needed cute. Let's do it. Marinette linked her arm in his. It felt warm and comfortable. She wished this moment could stretch out so tomorrow wouldn't have to come. Adrian's head whipped toward her, golden locks flying as if he'd remembered something urgent. She looked up, waiting for him to speak. He didn't say anything, though. Just gave her a deep gaze and a close-lipped smile. What is it? Marinette asked. But he shook his head. She knew he was holding something back, but she just wanted to make things easy for him so she didn't press. Instead, she tackled him with a hug around the waist, making their steps sway. I love you, she wanted to say. I'm here for you. You're not alone. Tell me everything. But such words and promises hurt too much when their future was so uncertain. There was nothing either of them could say to make things better. Even though Marinette felt just right by his side, as if she'd been reunited with her other half, fate was sweeping them in different directions regardless of what they wanted. Good night, Marinette. Good night. Marinette lay in bed, staring at the ceiling. She was drained, her nerves vibrating after all the running, swinging, walking, fighting, and crying she'd done over the course of the day. But somehow, she couldn't sleep. Whenever she tried to close her eyes, they would pop back open as if they had springs attached. The silence started to buzz in her ears. She heard Adrian shift under the sheets. Adrian. Adrian aggressed. Dear, sweet Adrian, who was going away. She didn't want to cry again. She'd done enough crying today. Adrian, she whispered into the darkness. Yeah? His responding whisper was eager, as if he'd just been waiting for her to say something. I can't sleep. Neither can I. They'd watched 10 episodes of Yakita to Japan before deciding it was probably a good idea to get some shut-eye before tomorrow's events. It was going to be another long day. I miss you already. 
Marinette crawled to the edge of the bed and rested her arms on the rail, propping her chin on them. Don't talk about it, Adrian pleaded. He shifted again, the rustle of the sheets seeming very loud. Marinette just wanted to be close to him. Would it be too bold to ask him to come up to her bed? Her heart was already breaking at the thought of him leaving. She just wanted to talk as they fell asleep. She wanted to feel his warmth. Ah, oh, screw it. Can you come up here? She asked breathlessly. Yes, Adrian answered, barely letting her finish the question. Hardly a moment later, he was out of bed and scaling the ladder. Marinette laid back against her pillows, all the way at the edge to give Adrian plenty of space. Sorry if it's weird, I just... You know, you're leaving, she said, as if that explained everything. I said don't talk about it, Adrian said, his voice so close to her ear. His outline was visible in the moonlight. Marinette reached for his arm and slid her hand down until she found his. My kitty, she said, giving it a squeeze. Did I ever tell you? I love it when you call me that. He squeezed back. There was a lump in her throat. She was determined not to cry anymore. I'm sorry, she said. Why? Because I rejected you so many times. Because I never thought you were serious. Because I didn't realize how lonely you were. Because I let you suffer by yourself. Because I won't be there to help you heal. There were too many reasons for her apology reaching too far back into the past and the future. A lot of things, she just said simply. No reason to apologize, my lady, Adrian teased. That was it. How could she live without her adorable partner? Marinette lunged forward and buried into his chest, feeling complete only when he returned the embrace and folding her in his arms. It was so warm, and she could feel his heart beating through the soft fabric of his pajamas. So much for not crying. I'm gonna miss you, you dork. He kissed her head. I'm gonna miss you too, Bugaboo. Finally, sleep caught up with them, as they took refuge in one another's company, shielding one another from the wave of inevitability that was crashing down upon them. The next day was coming with a vengeance, and there was nothing they could do to stop it. Thank you for listening to Chapter 11 of Nowhere Else to Go. Let me know what you thought in the comments, or like this video to show your support. Stay tuned for the next part!